guys, welcome back to the page. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're new, my name is Sarah. I'm a Christian life coach and content creator. And if you're not new, if you're not new, then welcome back. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And thank you guys so much for all of your kind comments and your prayers and just all of your support in general. Me and my husband, Adam, really, really appreciate it. Um, so I have a message for you guys today that I am excited to share. It's actually funny because this morning or the past couple days, I have been feeling really, really good. And when I woke up this morning, I felt amazing. And I was like, wow, I'm gonna put out so much energy on my video because I'm gonna have so much energy. And then I just started feeling kind of weird and tired. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit low energy in this video as I have been in many of my videos, but I was excited to bring more energy today. But nonetheless, I'm not gonna let it stop me. I actually sort of think it was more of a spiritual thing that started happening and like kind of like bringing this um, oppression and like apathy over me. Cause like, I feel, I don't know, it was just weird how it just suddenly came about. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, anyways. It's not gonna stop me. I'm still up. I'm still here. I'm still gonna share my story. So the story that I want to share with you guys is a testimony of something that happened a few years ago, maybe four years ago. And I don't think I've ever shared this story before. Um, but I just really, really love it. And I want to share it with you guys because I want to emphasize that the Lord will defend you and that the Lord will fight for you. And you only need to be still, like it says in scripture. So firstly, I'm just going to quickly read the scripture to you guys that says um, from Exodus 14, 14, that's actually very easy to remember. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. So, okay, I took some notes just so I could remember the story. Um, so I'm gonna share a story with you guys and then I'm gonna tie it all in. So again, this was about a year after I got baptized and really became a true Christian. Um, I was working a lot of, uh, what's it called? Experiential marketing and brand ambassador work. So I did a lot of like pop-up shops and like different things like that. So I was working a pop-up shop in the mall in Toronto. And basically, if you can imagine like a pop-up store, it was more, it was a kiosk basically. So meaning it was like in the center of um, the mall, not, okay, not in the center of the mall, but in the center of a hallway so that like, you're in your own little like booth kind of thing and you can't really like hide from customers. You're just, you're there and you're very exposed, you know, to the public. And um, also you never know what type of people are gonna come into the mall and you know. So anyway, so I was working um, as like cash in this little kiosk and let's just say maybe I think the mall closed at 10 p.m. Let's just say can't remember what time it was but it was in the it was late in the evening so let's say it was 10 p.m um the type of services that we were doing is, is that ba basically people would tell me what service they want i would punch it in and then it would take about 40 minutes to an hour for them to receive what they ordered so i think it was maybe i don't know 10 minutes before the mall was closing and then there was like four people that came and lined up outside of the kiosk and obviously like we can't even take one more customer because of the time, but it's hard for them to know that because we're a kiosk, so we can't shut our doors. We're just like exposed. So um, I think we had a little sign up, but like nobody really saw it. So there was a bunch of people, maybe four people um, that lined up and I couldn't even take one more person uh, because the mall closed in 10 minutes. It's just not gonna happen. It's gonna take 20 to 40 minutes. It's just not gonna work. So um, anyways, the person who was in the front of the line, I told them, I'm really sorry, but the mall closes in 10 minutes and we can't take any more orders because your order is going to take between up to 40 minutes. It actually could even take longer. Um, anyway, so that person, I don't remember, they were maybe disappointed or, but they took it well and then they left. Um, the person behind them then came up to the cash and 
I don't remember exactly, but they basically started like verbally assaulting me and um, just saying like, started telling me that I was racist because I wouldn't take their order. Even though again, there was four people in the line of like all different cultures and ethnicities. So it really didn't even make sense. But yeah, basically just like, this person was around my age too. Um, and they were like really aggressively like coming at me. And again, I'm in a kiosk and like I cannot go anywhere. Um, I'm in a box, like a literal box. And like, it's like, I have nowhere to go, you know? Um, there was no manager there at the time. I was just working with one other girl who's around my age and I think she was just really shocked and she didn't know what to do. Um, and then obviously, you know, I explained like, there's not much more that I can explain. You know, I'm sure you guys have experienced this before. And if you've worked in customer service where you can have a customer who's super angry and just like, there, there's nothing that you can say that will please them. They are just, they just, they're just being unreasonable basically. Um, and then, so yeah, you know, I told him that and then he took out his phone and started like FaceTiming his friend and filming me and saying like, this girl's racist and like, like she won't take my order, blah, blah, blah. And he was like calling me all sorts of names and stuff and like just being super, like trying to kind of get close to me, even though I was like behind a little thing at the kiosk. So obviously like if you guys have been in that situation, you're, you're just like, like I was shaking. Um, even though I didn't think he was actually gonna do anything, it was just more so, it's just so uncomfortable, like you don't even know what to do. And I was like texting my manager and she was like, honestly, you deal with it. Um, you can try to call security. And so I was trying to call security. They were not coming. <laughs> I don't know if it's because it was the end of their shift, but security was not showing up. Um, and again, this keeps happening. Like he keeps like antagonizing me basically. And I'm just like, I have no idea what to do. Um, the funny thing is, is that at the time, one of my friends was in the mall at that time. And um, he was just someone that I was working with, like doing photo shoots and things like that. And he was like an ex security guard slash like bouncer. So he was like a big person and just like a very, I would say intimidating person. So if he had come around, if he had known what was happening and he had come around, he would have definitely been able to deal with the problem um, in terms of just like, he would have been intimidating and this guy would have just like, you know, left or whatever. Um, so I was thinking, oh my gosh, like where's my friend if I, you know, and, and again, like there's nowhere for me to go. There's nowhere for me to hide. So it keeps happening and I'm like all shaky and everything. So I'm like, hey, I don't know what else to do. Security's not coming. My manager's not coming. My friend's not here. Like, I'm not gonna just pick up the phone and, and start calling him. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna um, busy myself with work, I guess, and just try to make it look like I'm busy. So I think I, I don't know, I just like turned around and I went to this little like cabinet behind me and was like, I'm just gonna pretend that I'm like working before I get like assaulted. Um, and yeah, basically, then this happens so again still going he's still video he's still filming me he's still calling me names he's still being aggressive um nobody is helping me <laughs> because i have one co-worker and she's busy finishing up a different order from before manager's not coming nobody's coming so i didn't even think in that moment to pray i don't know if it's because i was like a new christian or because i was just totally probably caught off guard and I was just like in complete shock that I didn't even know what to do. Um, but I'm in my mind, I'm like relying on all of these, uh, you know, all of these people that could come and do something and help me. And as I'm standing there all shaky and feeling super, super uncomfortable, all of a sudden I just feel these like arms embrace me. Um, it wasn't <laughs> the guy, <laughs> it wasn't something scary. It was not the guy, but all of a sudden I felt someone come up behind me and just hug me and hold me. And I could tell it was a little kid, obviously, because I could feel where they were like wrapping their arms around me. They were like, they came up from behind me and were wrapping their arms around my like waist, or, like my stomach. So, um, and I just felt like so much love and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I turn around and it's this little girl who her mom was just finishing up her order from my coworker who was beside me. And this little girl was probably 
as old as five years old. I don't know if she was four, six, or five, but I would say average, she was about five years old. And she was standing behind the kiosk with her mom. She obviously had no idea what was happening. Like I know that she didn't know what was happening. Um, and technically you're not allowed to come into our kiosk. Like it still has a countertop and there's this little kind of door that you have to go through to come into our kiosk. Um, and like, I hadn't even like, I hadn't even seen her before this. I didn't smile at her. I wasn't talking to her, nothing. And she just came on her own, let herself and <laughs> came through into our kiosk, even though I don't even think she could have seen over the counter. She came into the kiosk. I was the only one in there. She came up behind me, didn't know who I was and just like wrapped her arms around me and was hugging me. And I looked down at her and she was like the most, like she had just love in her eyes and she was such a joyful, kid and she was just looking at me like smiling and laughing and like holding on to me and I just felt God's love so much in that moment of like protection and and it was like you know what is that guy right there gonna do when this little kid is holding on to me and like hugging me and um it was like it totally you know De uh, deflated the situation and anyways as she's just like holding on and hugging me and then shortly after the security guard um the security guards did eventually end up coming over and talking to the guy and then you know he obviously had to be like escorted out um but what i find what i thought was so beautiful about that moment because i could obviously tell that it was the lord that you know, that the little girl was working through the Lord. Um, but I think what was so beautiful about that was that we think, you know, that God is gonna come in these like huge, mighty ways and he does, but it's just so funny how he used a child. Like he could have used my manager who had a lot of authority, um, who for some reason wasn't coming over here. He could have used the security guards to come right away. Um, who have a lot of authority could literally escort him out. He could have used my friend who was like I was saying, like an ex bouncer slash security guard and like a big guy that was very intimidating and would 100% have my back and would 100% have said something and done something. Um, but instead of using any of those that you would naturally think to look to, he just, he used the sweetest little child to come in and comfort me and it brought me so much joy and so much comfort and so much peace in that moment like I like you know in that moment where if like you've been like bullied or maybe you're being called out unfairly and you just feel like so shocked or like embarrassed or like you just don't know what to do and it's like no one's gonna stand up for you no one's gonna have your back and then all of a sudden this like little kid just comes and just like holds on to you and hugs you um and yeah, it was just such a relieving feeling and I just loved it. <laughs> um, and so what that reminded me of too is basically the way that in the Bible, um, the way that the, would it be the Israelites or the Jews? Yeah, basically that they were, how they were expecting the Messiah to come. They were expecting him to come and, you know, in this mighty way, um, which he will in the second coming but he he came as a child um and he came humbly and was born in a manger and there's this song which i've shared before with you guys called seasons and in the song i wrote down this part of the lyric um there's one word he says in the song so he's talking about seasons and how things take time and he said you could have saved us in a second but instead you sent a child um so it didn't you know the help didn't come in the way that it was expected um but that was so what, what was so beautiful about it so before i kind of bring it wrap this up and kind of bring a conclusion to this i'm just going to check my notes because i just wrote down a couple of these um details here so let me just see Yeah, that was it actually. That's all, I think that's all that I wanted to share. Um, and it made me think of the scripture as well. I'll, I'll put it here, it's Psalm 121, and then it's a verse within it that says, me and Adam recently memorized the scripture. Um, I look to the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth.
And so I just wanted to encourage you guys that um, the Lord will fight for you and that he will defend you. He is your defender. So maybe if you're facing an injustice right now, whatever that could possibly look like, or you're just in a situation where, you know, you really need to be defended, whether it's your reputation, maybe it's at work, maybe it's at school, maybe it's with your children, maybe it's with like a spouse or an ex-spouse or something like that where you need defending. Um, whichever the situation is, I just wanted to encourage you that your help comes from the Lord and your help might come in a way that you were not expecting it, but it'll be just so much more beautiful. And I just love how, yeah, I just love how humble how humble the way the way that this help came so humbly um and yeah i just want to remind you guys that the lord will fight for you you only need to be still so that is my message for today i feel like that was like a lot shorter than most of my messages but that's really all that i wanted to share with you guys for today um i pray that this message can bless you if you know someone who would like to hear this message please share it with them and um, i just really wanted to thank you guys so much for to all of our subscribers and to our patreons and to my clients and my students and um yeah just everything that you guys do um and i probably would say i've really recently realized that i really need to ask more for prayer coverage um i had um the other day i just felt like wow i really feel like i need more prayer coverage and then that same day or evening i had a message from one of my previous students slash clients slash friends and she sent me a message and she was like i really feel like you need more prayer coverage like, essentially um and so that's what i want to try to remember as well at the end of my videos is if nothing else if you can remember to cover me and adam in prayer it's so appreciated um, you know, especially as I, I just launched the second semester for Now Bloom Academy. So I have my students that I'm, I'm wanting to cover as well. And um, yeah, so I really, really appreciate your guys' prayers. It means so much. And um, one last thing I'm going to share with you guys because I rarely give a shout out to Covered by Grace. So in case you guys aren't aware, you'll see all the links below. But I'll just show you guys my sweater. So this is from the newest collection from um, my company with my friend Natasha covered by Grace. So I am just happened to be wearing it today. So I wanted to show it to you guys because I think it's super cute with a turtleneck. Um, yeah, that's all I want to share for today. So thank you so much for liking, subscribing, commenting for your prayers and um, bless you. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.